Not too loud? All right. Happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers that are in the church today. Um, I always do my preaching and my teaching based on what the Holy Spirit leads me to do. And I know that Jerry did something on the virtuous woman, which, you know, was is, is talking about women and mothers and the, the important role that they play. And uh, my sermon today is not, not based on that, but I, yet I still have quite a bit to say on, on that. Um, we're going to be in Acts chapter 16, if you would like to follow along. <coughs> Be Acts chapter 16, and we are actually going to start with verse 16. <coughs> so, what I did want to say, if you were to start, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today, and it's something we, I feel like, kind of, kind of put last in our walk in a way because. Anytime we need something big done in our life, or we're praying for somebody to be healed, or we're, we're praying for, we pray to God for the mountains to be moved out of, out of their place in order for us to accomplish what it is that we're trying to do, we pray to God for that. And then we pray for, we pray to Jesus Christ when we need forgiveness of sins, and uh, through that blood that He shed on that cross. But the thing we forget about is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is so so powerful. Do you not understand that when you pray to God, it is the Holy Spirit that puts it into action and into motion. Yes. The Holy Spirit is always moving. The Holy Spirit is always directing and talking to us. Uh, it, it helps us to avoid the potholes in this life and help navigate the road uh, to keep us out of trouble um, if you choose to listen to it. And uh, so really and truly, that's what this is about. But I will say, if you want to read from verse 1 to 16, there are women, faithful women, that took Paul and Silas in, that gave them shelter, that fed them. Then you had another one in, in uh, Macedonia. That Her name is Lydia. And she's running a church there out of her house. She's also doing prayer crew down at the river. And the reason I'm pointing these things out is... Because women are the backbone, as far as I'm concerned, they are the backbone of any ministry in a church. Amen. You go to a church today and you see who's doing the work. It's women. That's right. And uh, I know I aggravate the women in the church all the time because I know in 1 Peter it says that women are the weaker vessel. Well, by God, there's a lot of men that need to step up to the plate and do what they're supposed to do and play their part because it is the women who are carrying the ministry in churches today. So, no, I'm not here to question God. If God says they're the weaker vessel, that's fine. But I'll tell you right now, God gave us the most beautiful gift when He gave us women. And that is the absolute truth because a man cannot get it done without a good woman behind him. And that's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, it's really sad. There's a lot of ministries and churches that say that women shouldn't be teaching. They shouldn't be preaching. And uh, they're ignorant of the Word. That's all I can tell you because there are a lot of prophetesses in this Bible. Uh, Deborah, when she went into battle, if it hadn't been for her, she had to get on the chariot and she went straight into battle. Women have got it done in this Bible when a man couldn't. So for a man to Amen. sit there and say a woman plays no role in a church is just ignorant of the Word. Amen. Um, one of the most beautiful gifts in my mind that God has ever given us I see faithful women coming to this church each and every week that their husbands are not here with them. And the husbands ought to be the ones in church being an example to their kids and their grandkids. Uh, so women play such a very powerful role. God knew what He was doing when He gave us the women. Uh, but I will say in this, like I said, is some very good faithful women leading up to the story that I'm about to tell you. Uh, this is something that I've wanted to teach on for a while. Um... So what's going on here is Paul and Silas are on the circuit. Now what do I mean by that? This is, this is a particular area that they are, they are going to to preach and to teach the gospel in churches that they have already established. You also had Barnabas and you also had Mark John. Okay, But Silas and Paul are on the circuit. And what I want you to understand about this, and I'll tie it back together in the end of it, 
It was the Holy Spirit that was leading them as to where to go. They were on their way to Asia and the Holy Spirit did not suffer them or allow them to go to Asia and said, no, you're going to go over here. They listened. I want you to pay attention. They listened to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there's a reason for that. If you are in tune with God today, you've got to listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, you get done studying this and then you can also look at your own life and understand and see if you look back how the Holy Spirit was involved in getting you to where you are today. Whether it was led you to a certain person or led you to a certain place that because of the people that God puts in our lives that it has put us on a, a better path. Uh, so we have to listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so anyway, Paul and I were going to go to Asia and he had a vision. God gave him a vision of a man praying, saying, Come unto us. And this was in Macedonia. Again, Barnabas and Mark John wanted to go, but the Holy Spirit said no. It was Silas and Paul. Why? Why Silas and Saul? Or Paul and Silas, I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to pick it up in uh, chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought which brought her masters much uh, met us with Lord, I can't even talk today, much less sing. Uh, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Okay, so here you have this woman who is possessed with an evil spirit. Not only in an evil spirit, it says the, the spirit of divination, which means in the Greek, python, which means serpent. She had the serpent spirit from the, from the devil himself that she was possessed with. Now, it doesn't say who these people are now that are using this woman to make money. It is the magistrates. What is the magistrates? They are the curators or, uh, I can't even think of the word, the bottom line is they are in the temple of God now and they are using this woman to make money. Now, evil spirits have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, folks. They cannot tell the future, but they can sure tell about the past. And that's why in the Bible they call them familiar spirits. You know, you used to go to the carnivals and they got their little globes out there and they tell you fortune. Well, now it's a lot bigger money-making business today. The people that sit there to say they're talking to the dead, they're not talking to your loved ones because they cannot cross back over. They are dealing with an evil spirit. And God does not like that. <clears throat> Alright, so uh, here, you, here you have the leaders of the church and they're, they're exploiting this lady for money. Now what should they have done? If they had loved the Lord, they wouldn't have allowed this to continue on and they would have got rid of the evil spirit Amen. for this poor soul. Uh, no big surprise about uh, people trying to make money in church instead of teaching God's Word. Uh, Alright, so verse 17. <clears throat> the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, what God wants you to see here is why is it saying that it is the spirit of the serpent? Because He wants you to understand the, the M.O. of Satan himself. So what is the evil spirit doing? It's stroking their egos. Oh, look at these. These are great prophets of God. They, they are teaching God's children the way of salvation. They are fantastic and they are great people. Now, Satan always builds you up before he tears you down. How many times you got people that butter you up or stroke your ego in your life that you come across and you're like, oh man, you're just the greatest and I just, I just want to be a part of that, this, that, and the other, and then they end up robbing you blind. Or they end up stabbing you in the back. We have to be careful. God is making a point here. That is Satan's M.O. When somebody comes to doing that to you, now, I, I have a construction business, as you all know, and I got people that come to me wanting a job all the time, and they tell me how great I am, and that they've heard nothing but good things about me, and they want to work for me. You better hang on to your wallet. Because that's exactly what's going on. 
They're up to something or they're wanting something from you. So Satan will always build you up before tearing you down. What did Satan use on Christ? When he tempted him on the mountain? He used Scripture, right? I mean, he'd sit there and quote Scripture until it got to the very end and then he'd twist it around to make it say what he wanted it to say. So Christians who are not familiar with God's Word can be had by Satan. And Satan loves stroking men's egos. Now you know men don't have egos, right? <laughs> Satan loves stroking men's egos. And boy, does that get us in trouble sometimes. Verse 18. And this did she many days. I mean, this woman is following them around. They're walking around trying to preach the gospel. And they're in the church trying to preach the gospel. And she continues to follow them around, possessed with this evil spirit. And did this many days that Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now, that is what we are supposed to do. When you sense an evil spirit on somebody, you command it out in the name of Jesus Christ and you command it to get back to the abyss from whence it came. Because if you don't, it will return again. So he put, uh, gave you a powerful example there. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Uh, he gives us power over Satan himself. Alright? A lot of people today that are in the ministry, see, I told you Satan likes stroking their egos. And the Spirit was stroking their ego because they were preaching the Word of God. So a lot of people get full of themselves today and they get all puffed up. I like to say puffed up preachers and Satan stroking their ego. And before you know it, it's like I told you today. So I really didn't want to get up here and sing before you today because this is not about me. It's about God. And I don't want to ever get that appearance. I love God and it's about God. But a lot of people, I mean, they get up here and all of a sudden they start taking the credit for the glory of God. And we are supposed to give that credit to God. Mm -hmm. Alright, verse 19. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. He messed their business up. They were making good money off this woman. Who cares if she's possessed with a demon? Let's use her to make money for the church. And that's what they were doing. So they got upset. Now all of a sudden they have gone and taken Paul and Silas and they have taken them to the marketplace. So it's about business and it's about money instead of about God. Today, church is a big business. And it's about money and greed. And it's not about what it is supposed to be, which is to teach the Word of God and bring as many to salvation as we possibly can. I mean, she was healed. She was cleansed. Is that not something that we should have been celebrating? Mm -hmm. Praise God for getting rid of that evil spirit. But no, that's not what they did. What did Christ do to get crucified? He messed up their business. That's it. He messed up their business and they killed him for it. Verse 20. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. <coughs> well, they're not very smart because they're, these boys are not Jewish. They are not of Judah. They are actually Romans. But they don't know that. <clears throat> and they're not making that point for a reason. So what they're saying here is the same trick that they tried to use on Christ when they asked Him about the subscription on the coin which had Caesar on it. So these boys are saying, hey, we worship Caesar. He is our God. Uh, and, and we worship... Uh, so basically, they're worshiping that and saying that these boys are Jewish and saying that they are preaching Jesus Christ is God instead of Caesar. So they're trying to get them in trouble. Assuming again that they are Jewish. Mm. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the, and the magistrates rent, rent their clothes and commanded to beat them. They're going to beat them for what? Being preachers. They are preaching the Word of God. Mm. They are preaching the gospel. 
They rebuked an evil spirit back to the pit. And yet they are dragging them and now they are going to beat them. This again reminds me of Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, how those of us who know the true Word of God and are out preaching the Gospel will be dragged to the synagogues, which is church of Satan, and be persecuted and beaten for what we know to try to convince us to bow to Him. So they made a great big scene now. Now I want you to keep in mind the Holy Spirit is orchestrating this whole thing from the beginning. And you're going to see how it does. Okay? Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes on them, I mean, they beat them. Right there in public. Right there in the marketplace. They cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. They beat them. Why? Because they were teaching the Word of God. Keep in here in mind how they think that Paul and Silas are Jews. But they are both Roman. It is against the law to beat a Roman in public at this time. Without the order of Caesar and almost a death sentence to punish a Roman without a trial. Now they have publicly beat them and now they have thrown them into prison. You see, Paul is just sitting back because through him is going to drop the hammer on them. <coughs> We worry about things in our lives all the time. We pray about things we're not supposed to worry. Now Paul was sitting on this information that he knew. He took the stripes just like Jesus Christ took the stripes for me and you. But most of all, he is waiting on the leading of God Almighty and the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 40, 31 says, Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and be not weary. They shall walk and not faint. He's not worried about what's going on. He knows that God's in charge. And that's the problem with us today. We get impatient when we're praying for stuff. And then we try to get ahead of God. And then when it doesn't work out, who do we blame? We blame God. Do you not know that God loves you? He knows how many hairs are on your head. He will take care of you if you love Him. If you put Him first, if you serve Him, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Amen. Again, keep it in mind now what the Holy Spirit is doing here. We, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the shackles. They didn't just throw them into the prison, but I mean they threw them deep down under the prison. Are you letting Satan hold you in bondage today? Letting him falsely accuse you of things to hold you back out of a relationship with God today. Verse 26. And I love this verse very much. <clears throat> I think I skipped the verse, didn't I? 25. Thank you. That's a very good verse. Too. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. What did they do? They prayed. And sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They were in prison. They had been beaten. And what are they doing? Praising God. That's what you're supposed to be doing when you're in your trials and tribulations and the things that you go through. You continue to praise God because you know He is going to deliver you. Verse 26. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. So, when you wait on the Lord and you pray and you love Him, how many times in your life have you done that and suddenly, bam, prayer answered. Light switch flipped. God has changed somebody's minds. God has put somebody, uh, look at, uh, I have to use me as a pray for, you know, somebody to be in her life and she's prayed for it for years and then God. How many times we pray for Lydia that goes went to church in part of the youth group and lost her way? Suddenly, she changed. Mm -hmm. That is the power of the Holy Spirit of God working in our lives. Suddenly, 
I love that. And that's the way it happens when you wait upon our Father, when you pray for things. It may not always be the answer that you want, but God sees down the road. He can help you avoid the pitfalls in this life. If you will go and be led by the Holy Spirit of God. 27. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of the sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. Paul didn't go anywhere. The doors were open. The shackles were broke off. Is that not what God's Word does for us today? Yeah. It breaks the shackles off of us from the traditions and false doctrines of men in churches today. God's Word will break the shackles off. This guy was fixing to kill himself because it would have been a death sentence if he had lost those prisoners and he was about to fall on his own sword. <clears throat> Verse 28. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are here. He stayed. Now when things get tough, do you get up and run? Or when things get tough, are you going to stand up and act like a child of the living God? Yes. He could have walked out the doors. He could have left and went to a different city. But he stayed. Why? He was listening to the Holy Spirit. There is a plan here. Okay? We do not have to run and we do not have to hide. We stand our ground because we have God in our corner. Verse 29. Then he called for light and sprang in and came trembling, just talking about the jailer, and fell down before Paul and Silas. This jailer did. Look at how the Holy Spirit works and how the Holy Spirit is touching when they witness these things that God does. <clears throat> and brought them out. Am I on the right verse? Yes. Okay. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What did the malefactor on the cross do? He asked Jesus Christ to forgive him as he hung on that cross. And Jesus said, Today, not tomorrow, today I will see you in paradise. This man is asking how to get to know our Father and to enter into a relationship with Him. And I think of the verse, Proverbs 16, 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. And there is no gender in that. That is all of us. This jailer let them go and then asked about our God and Jesus Christ and how he could obtain salvation. Why? Because Paul and them were singing praises to God while they were in jail. Verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did it say only the people that are rich? Did it say only the people that are white or black? Did it say only the people that are poor? No. It doesn't matter who you are or what your race is or what your age is or what mistakes that you've made in your past and the things that you've done. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be forgiven. And He took them the same hour, we're talking about the jailer, of the night and washed their stripes and was back, the jailer was baptized. He and all and His straight away. I mean, they were in prison. They were in shackles. God released them. One was saved and one was baptized. But not only him, but his family as well. Verse 34. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all of his house. He fed them. The whole family is converted, folks. Why? Because of the example that they set even being in bondage. See, we can set that example today. When you are going through something in your life and others know what you're going through and they look at you and see how you handle it. 
And you handle it with strength and endurance because you know that God is going to take care of it. And then they will look at you and say, how do I have that? How can I obtain salvation? How can I obtain the blessings of God? How can I turn my life around? Just by being the example of how we handled our trial and our tribulation. Verse 35. Or 34. And when he had brought them into the house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the sergeant, saying, Let those men go. Uh oh. I think they've probably got word that it might be just possible that those boys are not Jewish. That they are actually Romans. Oh, you're in trouble now. Oh, they're in big trouble. <laughs> I don't normally do this, but I'm, I'm, it's just too much for me to memorize, so I'm going to read it. If you started back in the 15th chapter, there was dissension among the disciples with Mark, John, and Barnabas, and Silas, and Paul. I want you to see the Holy Spirit in God's hand in this situation. Alright? So, Paul chose Silas. Well, John, Mark, and Barnabas wanted to go. But see, the thing about it is, John, Mark, and Barnabas were Jewish. One was from Cyprus, and one was Jewish. Okay? So, they're going on this mission. You see the hand of God in this because of the dissension. Now, I also want you to understand that because you go through a trial and tribulation today does not mean that it's necessarily a bad thing. It is because of this dissension it is because of the problems that you're having in your life today and how you handle it, if you have faith in God, that God will use that to accomplish something. We know that all things work for good to those who love the Lord. Amen. Romans 8, 28, always. So Mark, John, and Barnabas would have been in the position that Silas and Paul have found themselves into. Keep it in mind, one is from Cyprus, one is Jewish. But Paul and Silas are Romans. Now, you already see what's going on here in the trouble that these guys could be in for beating them in public and putting them into jail. So Mark John uh, was of Judah and Barnabas of Cyprus, and they would have been in trouble. But the Holy Spirit saw both Paul and Silas were Romans both beaten without trial, which is against the law of Caesar, so the magistrates are in a heap of trouble. Yes. God knows when you are going into, you have to trust the Holy Spirit of God, folks. God can use. <clears throat> he can see down the road. He can see down the road. He can see your future. So now why did Paul stick around? He stuck around for Lydia who had a church there who was preaching and teaching down by the river who had a church in her own house. Alright, just continue on. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison, and now do they thrust us out privily? I mean, they're wanting to get rid of them. They don't want nobody to see them because they don't want to, them to know what they have done. He says, Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us. We're not leaving. You tell them to come down here and make us leave. And the, and the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. Uh-oh. And they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart of the city. I mean, they're begging them to leave now. They know they've messed up. Verse 40. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and they departed. Can I get an amen? Amen. 